Thanks for working hard all day and coming in here worshiping for us, man. It's not easy to work all day and come in here and do what you do. Thank you. So, all right. Well, like again, we survived the eclipse. We're here. The world didn't crash in the end. We still have toilet paper. I went to the store today, so we're good. <laughs> we're good. You know, Central Texans did a really good job of not freaking out this time around and buying up everything. And I even went to the grocery store. I sent my wife to the grocery store Saturday. She went to Sam's. She went to Sam's, H-E-B, and all the Aldi's all Saturday, and there wasn't hardly nobody in the store. So we didn't buy into it this time, so that's good. We didn't buy into the panic and the rhetoric of stock up and buy extra and buy extra and buy extra. Uh, but, you know, it's funny that I'm going to mention something that I heard. That, and, you know, I don't know everything about the government, and I'm sure you don't either. <laughs> um, yeah, but check this out. I want to read something to you. In, in 1948, in 1948, the, uh, let me, hold on. In 1948, we had this Smith Act came out in 1948. And this act, one of its provisions was it allowed the, the American government to send information to other countries and give them our own information, which was also mixed with propaganda, right? And in that bill that they, that they made, um, the Smith, the Month Smith Act, whatever it's called, uh, it said that it was against the law for, the, for, for them to do that to Americans. So we had to put a constitutional law in effect to make sure that our government did not lie to us or give propaganda to us. Well, it's interesting that in 2012, 2013, that was amended. So why would our government amend something that would protect us from propaganda? Well, I'm just going to leave that right there. <laughs> just let you know that Jeremiah, we're in the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah is living in a country that's led by lots of lies and lots of people proclaiming lies. And that's an interesting thing is Jeremiah is the only voice saying this. Now, I went today and I started watching like a, a movie of Jeremiah just so that I could watch and just kind of get a feel of the atmosphere and kind of what it must have been like for him you know, in his time to have to go and do what God called him to do when nobody was going to listen to him, when nobody was going to believe that God was sending him to say that because he was the only voice saying it. And it went against everything else that the religious people of the time were saying. And so that's a very lonely, lonely place. Very lonely and I'm going to tell you this, that what I realized is many of us are going to find ourselves in the near future in some very lonely places because this world is going to reject the very thing that brings us life. Think about that. Because some of us, like in our men's Bible study on Tuesday morning, um, I don't go to all of them, but I went to the one this past Tuesday. And... We were talking about the, power, the, the importance of reading the Word of God, knowing the Word of God, and, and, and at least having the Word of God in your life, and how often we, do we do that? There was 190-something hours in a week, right, that's available to us to be in the Word. How much of that time are we in the Word? And somebody said 2 or 3%, and somebody said, you know, I, I just do it this way. But the important thing was is that we understood as the men in that room the importance of the Word of God in our hearts and in our minds and in the course of reading it. Because, for one, even though we're saved and we're new creatures in Christ, we still have a sin nature that we have to die, that kill daily, right? You have to crucify daily. And so it tells us, so, so we know that there's a struggle that we can't just expect it to be an easy journey, because living a crucified life is not a cakewalk, right? 
It's not a cakewalk. It's not for the, it's not for the faint-hearted. Because to, 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 to have faith means you go against your very own thoughts. You go against your very own way of thinking about things. Sunday I said, when the, when the, when the Jerusalem council addressed circumcision, they sent back and said, this is all we ask. Don't eat things strangled by blood. Don't eat blood. Uh, don't commit sexual immorality. And um, don't eat things sacrificed to idols. Simple. Just do right. That's, that, was, that, was, that was the rules for Christianity. Think about that. The council sent a how to do it book to the church in Antioch. And it was just mentioned those things. It didn't talk about anything else. But in the course of time, we see these letters going out addressing things that came up like suing your brother, forgiving each other, do good to those who do you wrong, reminding them what the Christ had said, um, how we don't live under the law. And so I told my son today, I go, Jacob, it's important that you know the word of God. But I can't make you get into it. I said, but I will tell you this, son. Just do right. And then when it's hard to do right, and you don't understand why you got to do right, then you can read the Word and find out why. Then you can go and search and find out, and hopefully that will draw you into it to understand. Because faith in God, for me, is everything. Is it becoming that for you? Everything. I mean, every. Thing in my life is based around my faith. I'm getting older. I, I know that my death is imminent. I know that my body is, is trying to kill me like my dad says. Our body's trying to kill us. We know that. We understand those things and we know that it's not going to be forever. And so I want to be able to have some confidence for the next chapter. And I have found it and it's, and it's great. But the challenge is to walk this thing out. So let's watch God direct Jeremiah to these object lessons and to see what these object lessons are saying to us and see if it registers to us and if the Lord is speaking to us, this particular object lesson. So it says in Jeremiah chapter 18, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred, in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord. Look, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so you are in my hand O house of Israel, the instant, I, the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. Now, therefore, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. Return now everyone from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. Let's stop right there. So 
He just said to go to a potter's house and to watch the master at work here. So in the very beginning when Israel was first a nation, God dispersed them by tribe all around that area, right? You can see all the territory. And here's the thing. They never truly ever occupied 100% of what was promised to them. Never got the full blessing of the promise. Now, I'm just going to stop right there and just say this. How many of you are coming up short on your blessings? How many of you are pulling the rug out from your own blessing because of the choices you might be making? The attitudes you might be having, the thoughts you might be going with. You can rob yourself and you can, you can, you can keep yourself from receiving all that he has for you. I wanna, I, I'm not greedy to want all that he wants to give me. That's not greed. Greed is wanting what's beyond he, what he wants to give me. That's greedy. It's not greedy to want what somebody wants to give me. And if the Lord wants to give it to me, I want all that he has for me. I want to walk in so much blessing that, 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 that I die with a smile on my face. Damn, that's going to happen anyways. But I, I look around me, and I watch, and I listen, and I pay attention to so many robbing themselves, stumbling through when there's an easy way, when there's a better way, when there's smoother paths. And there's greater way. And he's going to tell us that. And then he says this. He said, if there's a nation that, that, I, that I speak evil against, and then they turn from their evil and do good, I'll return, I'll relent from the evil that I said I would give them. The hell that I said that I would give them for doing these things, I will take that hell away if you change your way. But if I tell you to do good and you do bad, then I'm going to, I'm going to remove the blessing. And bring the curse is what I'm going to do. At the time, at the time that we're reading this, they're all gone except Judah. All those. And here's the thing. When, when the Lord dispersed it, look, everybody got a different place. Some people were in the mountains, in the desert. Some people had beachfront property. The Lord decided. And it's the Lord's decision. He makes some of us like me. Short and amazing, <laughs> then sometimes he makes them tall and gracious. He makes us different. He puts us in different categories, different places, and, and, and we have different ways of being a part of what God has called us. We're not the same. You know, we're, we're, he, 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 and he's going to tell us, and we're going to see, but um, in Numbers chapter 6, I wanted, to, I wanted to show you in Numbers chapter 6 what God's word was concerning his people and his tribes from the beginning. And the, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons, the Levites, the priests. This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, the Lord bless you. And keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace so that they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. I want to be known as his. I want people to look at my life and go, man, I know there's something different about you. I've had people say, man, you know, the Lord has done what and given what to you? I want people to, to, to just be, shake their head. When I, tell, when I tell some people the story of how we got this building, I told one preacher how we got this building, and he just goes, man, how are you not jumping up and down? I go, well, it's been eight years, and I did jump up and down <laughs> for a while there, just so you know. Because I'm overwhelmed when God gives you more than you deserve, when he's better to you than you know you deserve, when you know your thoughts, when you know what you've done, when you know what you've done that nobody else knows what you've done, and you know he knows what you've done. This is still his desire for you. 
especially if you repent of the things that nobody knew what you did. Because at this point, when you repent, now the king of kings no longer cares what you did. Right? So let's just look real quick and just see what they, how they responded. And they said, this is hopeless. So we will walk according to our own plans. And, and we will, everyone, obey the dictates of his evil heart. So for me and you, in the Garden of Eden... What God used to make us? Dirt, right? He used dirt. So, and it's interesting that, that clay is also dirt, basically a, a kind of dirt. And so we're in the potter's hands. The Lord makes us the way he wants to make us. He lets us, he, he creates us to be born to the parents we're born to. I didn't get to choose my great parents, but the Lord chose them for me. Uh, and I just have to accept my place in life. Like I said, short and great. I just have to accept that. No, I'm just kidding. When I was growing up, I remember I went to Riker Catholic High School for one year. And when I went to Riker Catholic High School at one year, I met some people that were in different financial places than I was. And I remember my freshman year, I wanted to go to a baseball camp, and we couldn't afford to go to this baseball camp for whatever reason. I couldn't go to this camp, but my friends were going to this baseball camp, and uh, my friend's dad was very wealthy, so wealthy that Riker didn't have a JV team, but this man wanted his son to play baseball so much that he, he financed the team. He bought us uniforms, bought us a coach, Worked a schedule out for us and did everything so his son could play because he wasn't going to make the varsity team. But so he created this JV team. And so anyways, we did really well. And, uh, but he got to go to these camps every year. And I never got to go to the camps. But when we graduated, that guy went to University of Texas, got a scholarship. And I remember just thinking, man, I wish my parents had money to send me to camp. I wish I'd had better opportunities and just think about some of the things that, that I missed out on. But then when I became a Christian... And I began to walk this Christian life out. And then I began to see how my life was beginning to matter to the people around me that I was meeting at church. And how God was giving me a voice to people. And how I was able to share the gospel with people and bring people to the Lord. And how I began to use my personality to evangelize and to bring people into church. And to just, uh, if anybody's... I'd go, I walked up Valley Mills Drive when the kids used to park in the parking lots of Valley Mills Drive. I'd walk up and down Valley Mills Drive witnessing to the kids. I went to the Richland Mall, walking up and down the Richland Mall witnessing the kids. I went, I'd go to events down at Indian Spring Park and walk around and witness to people. I was just so excited. I'd knock on doors like Jehovah's Witnesses and knock on doors and inviting people to church. I just remembered that I just took my life into a whole new direction. It just, I just came alive. Something came alive inside of me, and I've been thanking God this whole time, and every one of those steps have led me here. It's crazy. Just, just every day waking up wanting to just share the gospel. We just wanted to tell people how real he is and, and how this life can, can, can affect you in a way that's, that's truly transforming. There's nothing in this world that can happen to us that can't, that can take our faith from us. I've told you, I've, 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 I've played the scenario out about my family being lost, killed, murdered, kidnapped. And, and, and I, I pray with all my heart that I would never lose faith in God in the midst of any of those things. Because I know a lot of people have had to go through those things and still came out trusting the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that people have lost loved ones, never get them back. But they knew that there was something better on the other side, the resurrection side. And that's where I'm thankful for my, for my heart. But the Lord is very, what we can't do is we can't be jealous of how God made you different than he made you. You can't be jealous of him. and He can't be jealous of how you're made and how you get to do this and you get to do that. And why does she get to have that? Why, does, why do they get to have that? And, and so we all have to understand 
that the potter is the one that created us and molded us and put us and made us the kind of vessel he wants us to be. And so I'm happy for your vessel, Manuel, and for what you bring to church and your family brings to church. And even, even how the boys, how God created the boys, you know, he created them. They're our blessing. God brought you, your family to us to allow us to love you and your boys and, 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 and to be a part of your life. We're all different. They may never preach like this, but man, they sure can't open the door like nobody's business. <laughs> What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, for this very purpose I raised you up, that I may show you. For this very purpose, I have raised you up that I may show my power in you that my name may be declared on all the earth. What he said was, is he allowed Pharaoh to come up and through all those generations to arise the Egyptians to that power so that when the Jews came around, he could show the world who he was through his power for the Jews as he came against Pharaoh. He set Pharaoh up. Now, is, that, is Pharaoh predestined? Is Pharaoh born without a chance? That's not my business to understand. That's beyond my payroll. All I know is this side of Christ, what I'm expected. I know on that side of the Old Testament, it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I know on this side, it is not. I know on that side, you could hunt down your brother's killer. On this side... You have to forgive him. So I do understand some things, but this is where he put us. This is how it, how it goes down. You will then say to me, why does he still find fault? If you say that you created Pharaoh, why are you judging Pharaoh? Why do you say there's fault in Pharaoh if you created Pharaoh that way? That's what he's saying. Now you're going to say this question to me. Again, it's above our pay grade. Why does he still find fault for who has resisted his will? So what if, if God wanted to make me a big bad ruler? How can I fight against that? This is basically what Paul is asking the rhetorical question about. And then he says this. This is when he tells you it's above your pay grade. But indeed, oh man, who are you? <laughs> it's above your pay grade. Who are you, oh man? Who are you? Who are you to ask these questions to demand an answer? That's when we go, well, I wouldn't be able to get up, but that's when you go down. That's when you go down. Right? But we are nothing but only to each other. There's, there's only competition between men. <laughs> there, there's only, you know, who can stand the straightest between men. But our true, our true measurement is to the creator and his righteousness. And you'll never measure to that. That's why Christ is our righteousness. So he says, oh man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed <laughs> say to him who formed it, why have you made me like this? He takes all the complaining out, don't he? You, you can't complain about the race you were born into. You can't... You can't blame about the culture you were born into. You can't complain about the parents you were born into, the city you were born into. Siri, she's always spying on me. Will the thing form say to him who formed it, why have you made me like this? Does not the potter have power over the clay from the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor. You know, the dishonor would be the one you use the restroom in. The honor would be the ones you pour the wine in for your guests. But watch what he says. In just a second, he'll tell you. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some for honor, some for dishonor. 
Therefore, if anyone cleanses, cleanses himself from the latter, what's the latter? The dishonored vessels, right? So if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, even if you were the piss pot. You can go to the king's cup. From the piss pot to the king's cup. That's exactly what he does for us. He takes us from the the dunghill to the holy place. (laughs) Right? He'll be be a vessel of honor, sanctified, I mean set apart, and useful, useful for the master, not for the preachers, not for the apostles, not for the bishops, not for each other, but for the master. We work for the master. We serve for the master. Prepared for every good work. I love it. I love it. Let's read a little bit further. Therefore, thus says the Lord, ask now among the Gentiles who has heard such a thing. The virgin of Israel has done a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow water of Lebanon which comes from the rock of the field. Will the cold flowing waters be forsaken for strange waters? Are you truly telling me that at this point you're going to walk away from the blessing and you're going to walk into the things that you think will bring you a blessing and they're actually going to be a curse? He's telling them. You're you're taking the virgin spirit of who I am and you're you're, you're, you're selling yourself as a harlot to the world's idols. And they're going to come and take you. And and you're going to be a part of them forevermore. Because my people have forgotten me. They have burned incense to worthless idols. And they have caused themselves to stumble in their ways. From the ancient paths. To walk in pathways. And not on a highway. That's what I was telling you earlier about. A pathway is like a jungle path. A highway is a paved smooth road. And he says you're going to come off the paved smooth road. And go down a pathway. I I told my family the other day. Before we had Google Maps. We had MapQuest printed out. And I went to Colorado. And I came back during a snowstorm late at night. And I was following, I had MapQuest, but I also had a map. And as I was looking on the map, I saw a shortcut, I thought. And so I took this shortcut in the middle of the night while it was snowing. There was no lights. I was sliding over the road. My heart was panicking. It was just like a little farm-to-market road that just... If you, weren't, if you weren't from Texas and you drove on, then you'd think the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was going to go down. <laughs> it's the kind of road it was. And uh, I just remember panicking and just praying, go, why did I get off the beaten path? Why did I get off the highway? I just kept telling myself, why did I get off the highway? Why did I get off the highway? And the Lord spoke to me. And he said, there's, there's never an easy way. There's never an easy way when it's his way. When I was in the tile business, the Lord taught me so many things about my life and, 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 and my choices in the life that I had to make. And he said, don't ever let sin hang around. Correct it. Fix it. Deal with it. Address it. Do what you got to do. Because if it hangs around, it's harder to deal with. It's harder to get out of you. It starts to solidify itself in there. And then, it, then all kind of stuff has to be broken out, just like a tile. Once the tile is set and it moves a little bit, You've got a little bit of time to reset it. But if you don't and you wait a while, you're breaking it out and you're chiseling and scraping and it's dirty and it's messy and it's costly. But if you deal with it immediately, it's set right back in place. And, and, and I'm telling you, the, the Lord is, if you've, if you've accepted him, you're saved, right? You're, you're, you're good. It's the world around us that needs us t- to shine. Don't just shine for your sake. Don't just shine for the sake of being. Because even the Lord says, don't don't just rejoice that demons are subject to you. You know, rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. 
Don't, don't rejoice in the things that, 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 that Christianity brings benefits to your life, like casting out demons or the walking in the blessings. That, that's not what we seek in this life. What we seek is to be his vessel of honor, his, his workmanship, to be used by him. And in the process, it's automatic that we're going to get the blessings. That's just automatic. They're going to overtake us. And that's what it says. It says they overtake you, which means you're just going forward and they're coming from behind just kind of to here, take this out. You're not chasing them is what I'm saying. You're, you're chasing the things of the Lord. You know, it's not easy to run a church. I'm just going to tell you. But I wouldn't do anything else. I love, I love, love what I do. I love the heart that the Lord gave me for, for doing what I do. I pray for the wisdom to continue to do what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, I'm accountable to him. For, foremost, I'm accountable to him. Not you, not you, not you, not you. I'm accountable to him. And because I'm accountable to him, that's going to that's going to be a part of my decision making and, and what I do and what I say. Then and, and and you may or may not like it. I don't know, but I'm just telling you. At the end of the day, I'm accountable to him. Even I tell my wife, babe, I'm accountable to him. This is the way I'm going to do it. This is I know it's the hard way. I know it ain't the fun way, but this is the way we're going to do it because I'm accountable to him, and this is what he's expecting of me the hard way. For, and, it, and it's been hard for us at times. But you know what? God has blessed me and her. Me and her are blessed. Every day I, babe. Every day I pick up Kingston, I'm blessed, man. Whew. My concern is for my brothers and sisters. My concern is for my son, Trey. What I want is I want somebody's light shining on him, around him, where he's at. I want the Lord to bring people around him to somehow guide him and, and, and plant a seed in him. Because he won't come around me. He won't come around us. And so my prayer is that somebody will reach out to him. My prayer is for my brother Jerry. You ain't seen my brother Jerry a while. And when you don't see him, it's not good news. So pray for my brother Jerry. Pray for those that, 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 that have walked with you and that don't walk with you no more. Pray for those that you don't see at church no more and aren't going to a church no more. We, we just want to be a light. We're not condemners. We're not finger pointers. And we're not all that. Listen, their choices will be their own downfall. What we're going to be is what I've always wanted to be. Instead of my hands to be a, hands of judgment, I wanted my hands to be hands of healing. I just want to be the, I want to be the ones that help restore people. I don't want to be the one God uses to rebuke people. I want to be the, the restore and help people. So let's let our light shine. No matter what kind of pottery clay God made you into, you are a vessel of honor for his service. Whatever that is. I need all piggy banks over here. <laughs> Whoever God's called to be a piggy bank, we need you over here. We need to know who our piggy banks are. I'm just kidding. Y'all ain't even funny. Yeah, you ain't even no fun sometimes. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for another day, Lord. And, and Father, I pray for those of us, Lord, who've come to understand the kind of vessel you're in the process of making steel in me, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that uh, I don't fight against, I don't fight against what you're cr trying to create in me. And I pray for those here today who find themselves being being remade or reworked, Lord. I pray for their, uh, I pray for their, 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 their walk, that they would, Lord, understand the work you're doing inside of them right now. And Lord, I pray that they begin to uh, take into account all their choices and all their decisions and all their thoughts, Lord, so that we could see where we're not lining up with your spirit. And so, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit right now walk each of us through this life, Lord. We trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you at Kim's in the morning.